So this is one of my favourites. One of my very, very favourite file effects. It's the Lindhurst in personal size. I've um, I've been the owner of the A5 size and the A4 size, and I'm uh, I'm looking to acquire a pocket and mini size. Uh, but that's for the future. But I'm obviously a big fan. Um, and I think other people are fans as well because Filofax, in their wisdom, decided to leave it in their catalogue for a very, very long time. 2002 to 2013, I believe. But I may be wrong. It might have been there a, a bit longer, but... Uh, but certainly it was in the 2002 catalog, UK catalogue and, and right up until 2000, 2013. Um, but if you, if you look at a price back in 2002, it was £45. Well, what is that in today's money? Um, well, as I record this in 2022, that's about £76 in today's money. So middle of the road in terms of price um if you go back to 2002 you could have bought a domino which was the bottom of the range that's the one with the rubber band uh that was 21 pounds and you could get a deco which was 171 pounds which was quite a lot of money in 2002 so so, middle of the range. Some models were cheaper, some more expensive. But uh, I think that this particular binder was a good combination of price and quality. I'm very, very good. But anyway, any, anyway. Um, uh, as I say, it was £45, £45 in 2002, which is about £76 in today's money. And it slowly rose in price until 2013, when it was £68, which in today's money is around about £82. So a slight increase in real-time costs over that period. So if you were going to buy one, then you would have been uh, better off buying one at the beginning, when there were 45 quid, rather than uh, leave it any longer and to be honest buying one earlier would have been a smart move and I will tell you why later on and it has to do with longevity but anyway um, this box this box really interests me um, because unlike they're obviously file facts are obviously aiming it at the, uh, the, the, the the business sector they're, they're, they're business orientated buyers it's very business like probably the probably the most business like box of all the filofaxes that were ever made so that's an interesting thing in itself in a in a nerdy kind of way um but uh i want to quote i want to quote the uh what 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 filofax how Filofax described this when it first came out and, and, and they say Lindhurst's classic good looks are guaranteed to give you the business edge um, and it's and it's very much it's very much aimed at the business user um, at, a t at a time when Filofaxes were the Folofax company was transitioning to a, a sort of more of a a fashion orientated um, market. They still saw their role as a, a manufacturer of professional orientated binders a, a thing. And and here we are. We've got the photo of the. And then we've got the photo of the Lloyd's building, which is iconic here in London. It's grade one listed. It's very unusual for such a modern building to be grade one listed uh, as a historic building. And uh, it's designed by Richard Rogers, of course, who only died a couple of couple of months ago, back in December. 
Um, but, uh, you know, it is, it is, the Lloyds building is very, very iconic. So I can see why they used it. Um, the date code on this is JDN, which suggests, which suggests a, a manufacturing date of uh, 2000s, if I've got my calculations right. So one of the very, very early ones here, um, possibly made before it was actually marketed. Um, now these inserts are all dated 2002, the rulers 2001. Uh, obviously, with 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 inserts, you just don't know when they were when they were made, or whether the previous owner has changed them at all. But you know, it's interesting that uh, that the inserts and the ruler and the binder all are that have roughly the same manufacturing date. Now, one of the reasons why I like this binder so much is simply because it wears so well now this this outer leather it's 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 described as deluxe leather but it is very hard wearing and i know that from experience because i have owned an a4 version of this binder the lindhurst since it since around about 2002 myself and although i don't use it quite so much now because i'm i guess i'm semi retired I used to use the, my A4. I used to take it out with me um, every day. So it's seen more outdoor activity than any other binder I possess. And so I know that it can stand up to being chucked around, uh, wedged on the seat of a, um, uh, a train or a table or you know, just people brushing past you, cafe tables, car dashboards, opening and shutting, opening and shutting. I know that the Lindhurst is very good in terms of wear and tear. And that's not always the case with some binders, as we know. Some last an incredibly long time a desire and are designed to do so, uh, particularly the vintage binders, English-made binders of old, and some more fashion-orientated binders with a with a sort of... Um, uh, I'm not going to mention them, but you know the binders I mean, that, that, that look a bit grubby and, and, and uh, worn within not, not too long a, a time period. But this one stands the test of time. Now... Just having a look at the flaps here. Um, oh, but before before I talk about the internal internal flaps, this this external flap, I love this design because it's just so useful. It's just so useful, especially if it's a business orientated binder. Um, so certainly in my A4 version, I used that a lot for paperwork. Um, good quality zip, uh, no problem at all. And this zip material is also hard wearing. It, it's not worn through on my A4 version, so pretty good, pretty good. I like this logo actually. It's understand. Uh, what am I talking? It's understated, but you know, quite classy. Um, I'm not a fan of logos, but you know what? It's, it, it's a small thing, but it, 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 it's, it just smacks of quality. I like this binder. And when you compare it to other binders that are zipped, I, well, I like it. I like it. Now, interior. This is another, another situation where this binder shines particularly with the where where the leather is prone to cracking on other binders this one i can vouch for the fact that there is no cracking there's absolutely no cracking here where it joins the rings uh, there's no cracking at i mean this this one is barely used um i i acquired it quite recently 
who knows what sort of life it's had but it but it, it's pr i'm guessing if i were to guess if i were to put money on it i would say that it's just been used occasionally for one year and then shoved in a drawer um but there's no cracking and there is no cracking on my a4 version either after a, an exceptionally hard life so i've got no reason to believe that it's not going to be the same for this one if it was used in anger over future years five card slots and there's this wider slot here i'm not sure what that's for um certainly the one on my a4 binder is actually designed for a floppy disk i don't think i'm not sure whether this is wide enough for that but no it's definitely not wide enough for a floppy disk so so i'm not quite sure what this slot is for but it but there it, we've got six slots and a full length flap um now i personally with i can understand why they have the flap facing the opening of the flap facing inwards towards the rings um but I suspect that, that that it's not as useful as it could be. And if you have a zipped binder, I would personally prefer the flap to be facing outwards, preferably gusseted, so that it could be used uh, in, a, in a more convenient way and then just relying on the zip to ensure that things stay where they're supposed to be. But that is what I would do. Uh, on the right-hand side here, you've just got one flap. Again, it's full length. Um, again, I would prefer it to be uh, facing outwards rather than in inwards. But 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 hey ho. Um, the pen loop is one of these standard size ones that is folded over, and it's hard to show on camera. But this one hasn't been used at all so so the fold is almost imperceptible inside you it's not yet been caught by a pen being slid in and out of the loop uh but it will it it will start to fray and you know as as they all do so um uh, it has yet to... Uh, interestingly, I wouldn't say it's Filofax's fault because of their own pens. There is no problem with this folded over loop because of the shape of the pen is more of a like a torpedo, a, so, uh, an arrow shape rather than a blunt rounded end. So there's nothing really to catch and it's only other pens that actually cause the wear on this loop, which eventually makes it slightly awkward. But it is what it, it, it is what it is. Now, rings. It's obviously something that we all worry about, and certainly I worry about, I, every time I acquire a file of hats, I worry about the rings. Um, these are the standard 23, millimeter personal size ones uh, they're perfect perfect in every way uh, you've got the, um, the, the 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 alignment is fine very very pleased with that um, you've got the file of hats in branding here and these are riveted so uh, you know if you ever need to replace them well it's going to be a right old pain but uh, but it but you know it is what it is um hopefully they will last the life oh excuse me hopefully they'll last the life of the, the binder but um you know uh i would prefer them to be uh removable but uh, like the old ones were but 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 there we go um obviously i don't know who manufactures these but they're but the file of hats has branded them and uh but there we go um inserts we've just got a few always useful um i'll add the plain paper to my stock of plain paper as it were uh but nothing to really report here um so um in conclusion what do i think about this binder well i would i would say that i feel the same as 
probably many other people because this has had a very, very long production line. Production line, sorry, production run. Um, and there's a reason for this. I would say there's there's two reasons, maybe three reasons, but the first one is demands. If this hadn't been bought by large numbers of people, they would have dropped it. The very fact that the Lindhurst had an unusually long production run is simply because people wanted it. Um, and not there's that at this time there were not many business orientated binders and um and so uh, this this became i guess the de facto business orientated binder for those that wanted a business orientated binder um they probably didn't have many returns on this one because because the quality is uh, it's very very good good build quality uh, not all of them have good build quality. This one s will still look good after 20 years of hard use, uh, which, which is great. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, interestingly, this design, uh, came out just before there was a major change at, uh, Falifax. And so this was... Uh, Falifax, the F Falifax war company was acquired by Let's, who make diaries, um, back in 2001, I believe. So this, this was a design that, that came, well, predated, presumably predate, I don't think Let's instigated this. Um, I'm, I, my hunch is that this, this design was already on the drawing board or in, in the, in the, um, I mean, if you look at the date code, I suspect this, this came out, this binder, the Lindhurst came out just before Let's acquired them. Um, and now Let's is very much a, a business catering for business customers. And so I, I think what they did, although there was, that there has been a gradual drift. Certainly, that there was an emphasis on on uh, the fashion side of uh, the Falifax uh, industry um, at around the time. I think the they they recognised that there was a need to as well as well as cater for the the the, the uh, fashion accessory market, they probably realised by looking at the figures that there was also demand for um, from business customers as well. So I think I think they that is the reason why they let the design continue for a long time. Um, and I like it. I like the fact that there is one. And I, I've had I've had a few. And I, my A4 one I've had for 20 years. Very pleased with it. Finally, and I haven't forgotten about flattability, but I thought I would leave flattability. I normally, I normally start with flattability, but today I decided to leave flattability to last. Because it is the elephant in the room. Now, depending on which Firefax Lindhurst you get, you will get different degrees of flattability. Uh, the construction of the binder means that this doesn't have perfect flattability, at least for this personal size because the, the the binder is just too stiff because of the construction of the binder across the spine now could i live with that given the fact that that flattability is the most important thing for me and the answer is yes and i'll tell you why because a zipped i would not use a zipped model as my day-to-day Falafax indoors because I for a start if you're writing 
the, the, the zip is constantly rubbing against your hand or your wrist. I, I wouldn't use one as a day-to-day -day binder indoors. However, having a zip transforms it into something that you can take out without fear of losing paperwork or tickets or bits and pieces it becomes that ubiquitous thing that you can put in a bag and know that you are carrying everything safely and in that that particular use flattability is not so important you can you can jot things down, you can hold, thing, hold the binder open in your hands, you can take a page out and write and put it in, or you can have a writing pad and you can make a note and, and put it in the, either the inside or the outside flap. And so I do not have an issue with flattability with this binder because of the purpose to which it is obviously designed. And so for that reason, the flattability score is irrelevant. I would give it naught out of 10 for flattability. As you can see, it's not, it's, it, it doesn't have any flattability at all. But from a perspective of what use I would put it to, I'd, I, I, I would happily own this and use it if it weren't for the fact that I'm, uh, I'm actually, uh, I prefer well. There's there's two filofaxes, two filofaxes sizes I use predominantly when I'm out. Um, one is the the, the mini size, and because uh, I use a Guildford Extra Slim, uh, but also a four size. I uh, I do use I do use the personal size outdoors in the form of my Guildford Slimline personal size, uh, but not very much. Um, what would I use this one for if I was, uh, you know, I, if I was using this, I would use it as, um, to keep important documents that I, uh, needed if there was a fire in the house or something like that. I would just keep it somewhere and then take it with me. Uh, so that I knew everything was in one place and I could actually, at a pinch, put this on a, in a, fit this in my inside jacket pocket. And so I would, I would be able to escape the fire or the, or the floods. We're having a lot of floods in, in the UK at the moment, as I don't know whether you could have, you heard, uh, some rain on the roof uh, at the beginning of this recording, but, but, uh, we're, we're having a tough time. So, so, you know, it, I would, I would, ha I would use this as an emergency file of hacks. But anyway, I'm, I'm waffling here. We're up to just over 23 minutes, which is probably the longest one I've ever done. But the, the reason is because I am really, really pleased with this design. It's an iconic design from the file of hacks brand, and I think it deserves an extra mention. Thank you for watching.